What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norn, Rad 89 here, bringing you another video, Rad Movie Review. We are going to be talking about Matrix Reloaded today, the sequel to the popular 1999 film, The Matrix. As you can see by my hat, it is close to the holiday time, and this might be the last video you see before Christmas. So uh, for that reason, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. Happy New Year and everything like that to all the people out there. I appreciate all you, the YouTube supporters, everybody out there, the fam. Thanks for supporting me. So let's get on to this review for Matrix Reloaded, the sequel. To me, a very underrated sequel in my opinion because I really do like this film for a long time. <coughs> excuse me. For a long time, the second one really did flirt with that first one in terms of which one was my favorite because I thought the second one was able to do everything that a sequel was supposed to do is what it did was acknowledge the first film but build upon it and expand upon the world because I really did enjoy that first film, the world they introduced us to and where they left us at the end of that first film. But you can argue that that 1999 Matrix film is a standalone film and it works just fine by itself. But then when Reloaded came out in 2003, I was like, dang, like we really are deep diving into this world and expanding on it so much more. And I love this. Like we get Jada Pinkett Smith added to the cast in this one. The amazing, beautiful Monica Bellucci. So we have a lot of good new people introduced into this film and they all have parts to play and stuff to add to the story. And I really did think it was fun, like for real, like it's that point in like you really have to be on the journey with Neo in these films to really enjoy them because when at this point like with Neo like one of my main positives with this film is that we're on the journey with Neo we are growing with him and at this point he's completely accepted by everyone around him that he's like the one he's the messiah he's the next like you know savior all these things but he's kind of like what am I doing like am I doing the right things or am I just like you know, doing what people are telling me to do. And like, you know, they just view me that way. Like, it's kind of like a really good deep character study. And like the other characters are there to really build upon the world and add that levity that you want and gravity, you know, of seriousness that you want when we get into the later, the third film and stuff in the third act in this film. So I think it's a really good deep dive character study. The problem like a lot of people have with this film is like they said, I think it's more like, the Wachowskis really kind of did deep dive and like cut up their own material and really dissect their own mythology within the Matrix world. But I really did not have a problem with that. Like I really did thought, I really think it's an amazing way to, you know, talk about their own material. Like they really did, like I said, for me, it felt rich. It felt good. And when you watch the second one, even though that first film kind of feels like a standalone film, when you watch the second one, it does everything I wanted the sequel to do. That's why it flirted with being the top dog, being better than the first one for me for a long time. Plus, we have a lot of great action sequences in this movie. Arguably, to me, one of the top highway sequences or fight sequences when we're on the highway and they're, like, on the top of the trucks and, like, Trinity's there and Morpheus and stuff and they're battling with, like, the ghost twins. Like, all of that stuff is amazing and they have the key master with them. Like, damn, like, that part is one of the greatest like highway scenes that I've ever seen shot. I really do enjoy that scene a lot. And there's other parts in the film though, like where the Neo fights all the Agent Smiths, but Hugo Weaving plays the Agent Smiths and there's like a hundred of him and they're all coming at him. It's a very ambitious scene and I really do enjoy the scene. And at the time it came out, it was a banger. Like I thought like, this is freaking amazing. Like I, I didn't think it looked like choppy or gross or stupid at all. Like at that time when it came out in 2003, I was like, this is awesome. Like this looks really cool. Like for real. And then, but it doesn't age gracefully as time goes on. You did like, it doesn't age well that scene, but all the other stuff introducing the, the architect and you know how he has more in-depth story and Neo finds out that there's multiple versions of him and there's multiple versions of the matrix and that he's been there before. And like I said, it's more of that whole thing of, are you going to do what destiny tells you to do and what is written? Or are you going to step up and choose your own path? And like, that's why I really like the second one. Like for real, I think this is an underrated sequel for me. Like, Oh, this one is still a banger. It's still a banger. Like I said, it has a lot of good scenes, a lot of good tense moments and great fight scenes. And for me does everything I want a sequel to do so but it's probably gonna for me it's gonna land in at a 9 out of 10 that first film is gonna be a 9.5 just 
a little hair above. The reason that first film, just a little bit a hair, comes above the second film for me is because of the importance of that first film and that nostalgia. And it really did open us up to the world. And when I watched that first film, I still kind of feel like I'm Neo for the first time and I'm learning about the Matrix or Trinity meeting her and I'm, oh, this mystery and all this kind of stuff. I really do kind of feel that vibe still with the first film. But I definitely have a blast with the second film when we get into it because it's balls to the wall. It's longer. It's got more action. You know, it's got more story. Like I said, it has everything you want in a sequel. More of everything. You know, it just, you know, that's that first film for me. There's a lot of nostalgia with it. And like I said, that monumental importance with it being like that powerful of a first film. And there was kind of a huge gap, 1999 and then 2003, we got the second one, but still a banger of a film. Now, remember to stick to the channel and like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing because we're going to be getting on to Matrix Revolutions, the third film. And then we're going to talk about the fourth film after that and then rank them all. So don't forget to stick to the channel so you don't miss a thing. And have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.